Hey everybody, something I want to show you really quick. So this is just a component of a larger project, but uh, some interesting uh, things that I discovered in making this little LFO. So this LFO is specifically for some jitter components that I have in this patch. And I wanted to be able to basically drive the LFO's rate with a frequency uh, but we need the uh, the rendering, I guess you could say, of the LFO to be driven by the same uh, metro that's driving my jitter rendering. Um, and I have that going to this sv.jr send and receive. And if I use a jit.fps GUI, you can see that it's a... 30 FPS. So I have this elsewhere in my patch. And um, this is, so the kind of update rate of this LFO is synced with this render bang. But the rate of the LFO is um, set with a frequency. And then I have these kind of coarse and fine controls that allow me to basically multiply that uh, frequency. And also just uh, like offset it a little bit. And I can also change the magnitude of it. And I, it's also, it has uh, frequency modulation. So I can get some pretty cool shapes out of it. Uh, so if we go in here, So um, the main patch is actually borrowed initially from Go, Generating Sound and Organizing Time book, uh, and I adapted it. And so the core algorithm is very simple. It's just a phase modulation patch where we have basically a carrier oscillator, which is on this side, and we're just generating a phaser here we're multiplying that by two pi to get that in radians, and then uh, getting taking the sine of that to generate a, a sine wave. And then with phase modulation, we basically just take a second one of these sinusoidal oscillators, and we add it to the um, to the phase of the first one, and the frequency of this modulating oscillator is set uh, as some multiplier of the frequency of the carrier. And then we can also set the depth of that modulation by basically saying, you know, how much of this uh, phase modulation is applied. So uh, this is basically just a drop in copy of the of any kind of normal signal based FM synthesis or phase modulation synthesis algorithm. Uh, but the difference is that I'm running in event gen. So there's no there's no tilde here. Uh, and basically what this means is that each time we send a message into the first inlet, which is going to be a number representing an amount to advance, essentially, uh, this phaser, and an amount to add to that kind of accumulation, um, will will process this entire patch. And the reason that I'm doing event gen here is because I'm working in the jitter domain. So I don't, I could just you know use a signal based gen tilde, and use snapshot to convert that into a floating point number. But there's a nice elegance here to being able to just use event gen and just basically clock this thing so that it's only calculating uh, the the value for the LFO each time that I that I need it to according to my frame rate per jitter. So the way in which this patch is different from a typical um, signal rate one is that in the signal rate one, I could just have a phaser and specify what the frequency is because um, 
the computer sample rate is in charge of basically, you know, executing this patch 44,100 times a second or whatever. But instead, I'm only executing this about 30 times a second because that's what my jitter frame rate is. Uh, and this patch doesn't know what that quote unquote sample rate or frame rate is. So instead of being able to just put in a phaser and specify a frequency like two hertz, instead I basically need to use an accumulator to build those phasers and I need to pass in a value 30 times a second that is the amount to add um, for each, uh, each uh, frame basically each frame that this uh, that this gen patch is, is executed. So the way that we get that increment is by basically taking a the frequency which we get here and then that can also be modulated with this coarse and fine control uh, and multiplying that by our our FPS, basically the the frames per second. Um, and that is just simple math here to get the, F, the frames per second. And um, so it's basically because the freak, we can think of the frequency as being the number of cycles per second, right, of course, of the of the waveform. And so then if we divide that by the number of frames per second, then we can get the amount of change in the phase for each, each frame. So that's what's happening here. And we basically have a bunch of parameters that are responsible for kind of that process. So we can get the, the jitter render bang two ways we can either just have it be passed straight in to the inlet or if you specify uh, the name of a send and receive pathway with this clock source message then you can uh, then you can get it that way so in this particular case i've basically just specified this sv.jr as the as the name of that send and receive pair and so i automatically get the um the bang inside the abstraction here uh, and then over here we have the frequency, which is being multiplied by um, the this kind of modulation value, which is uh, the course is on the range of negative like 10 to 10. And we just uh, raise two to the power of that number so that we can uh, get like zero is one to one is two negative one is 0 0.5. So basically for every integer change in that course value, we're getting a doubling or a halving of the frequency, which is a really good way to modulate uh, frequencies, particularly when you're interested in using them in a kind of any sort of rhythmic application. Uh, and then there's this fine control that's just on the, um, just uh, basically allowing us to kind of offset that frequency a very small amount. If uh, there are cases where we wanna push like perhaps two frequencies just barely out of sync with one another so that they uh, they shift in phase relative to one another. Um, and then down here we have just the um, attributes that control the FM patch that I showed you, which is technically a PM phase modulation patch. And then uh, just basic um, kind of amplitude uh, like scaling basically. So this is just scaling here where we're going from the range of negative one to one to zero to one. And then we uh, apply this kind of low and high so that we can scale that range of the output values to whatever we want it to be. Um, so if I uh, take a multi slider with reverse line scroll, uh, you can see that if we just take the the output after we apply the just the basic depth, then we're getting uh, that LFO on the range of negative one to one. So pretty like pretty nice. I kind of where I learned things here were particularly in this this area of like if I wanted to have a gen patch that ran in the event domain uh, but still used a frequency. Uh, as a parameter, then I would need to compute this kind of per sample offset, and I wouldn't be able to uh, 
like use a typical gen oscillator inside my patch instead i was going to have to uh, just use my own accumulators and then i can get any oscillation that i want from that uh, which is you know how you would do uh, like certain types of wavetable oscillators and other things like that in in signal gen anyway but for some reason i had to work my head around the idea that in the even if we're running at 30 fps we can still do things we just have to we just can't use like a can't use a phaser basically um, and then the other thing that i wanted to mention about this patch just for anybody out there is the kind of like structure of the patch as far as using the route object to and actually several of them route pass and route objects to kind of define the api i guess you could say the set of messages that this patch will respond to and then also making it possible to set the these parameters uh using patcher arguments like we have um here in the object box uh using this patcher arbs patcher arcs uh, object so this is a really good kind of general like architecture for abstractions where you use route to route um, messages at the inlet and then you kind of like manage all of your inputs through the route object if the object is able if the abstraction is able to accept signals then you can use type route uh, which will separate out the signals first um, and then you can use patcher args that's patched into that same route object uh, because you can basically treat those patcher arguments as though they were message into messages into the abstraction. And so then your abstraction is really working like it's a max object as much as it possibly can. Um, you don't get things like, you know, the ability to have like adder ui for those attributes that you'd find unfortunately uh like you would with gen or actually now uh v8 but you know pretty as close as we can get with just a like a normal max abstraction anyway so that's all i have to say about that thanks and i'll see you next time bye